Hi there, welcome back. In our previous video, we covered all the strategic decisions around hosting and running Solana nodes. Today, we're rolling up our sleeves and building one from scratch. So, whether you're setting up your first validator, deploying an RPC node for your application, or just want to contribute to Solana's infrastructure, this is the video you need to get your node up and running properly. By the end of this guide, you'll have a production-ready Solana node contributing to the network's decentralization and providing you with direct access to the blockchain. We'll cover every command, every configuration file, and some troubleshooting steps you need to know. This is a practical step-by-step -step tutorial that will take you from a blank server to a fully operational Solana node. Quick reminder of why we're doing this. You're contributing to decentralization. Every new node makes Solana more robust and resistant to censorship. Running your own Solana node gives you direct control. You're not relying on third-party RPC endpoints that might be slow or unreliable. You get real-time blockchain access without rate limits or downtime. And if you're building applications, having your own node enables custom integrations that simply aren't possible with shared infrastructure. Plus, validators can earn sole rewards for securing the network. Now here's what your system needs to handle Solana's demanding requirements. For your hardware, the recommended requirement is 24 CPU cores, 384 gigabytes RAM, and two terabytes NVMe SSD. Don't try to cut corners. Solana won't perform well on low spec hardware. You also need a stable one gigabit per second internet connection. For software, Ubuntu 24.04 is recommended, though Debian and macOS work too. We'll install Solana CLI tools, Rust toolchain, and Git. An important note is to use a dedicated server for production. Shared systems often can't provide the consistent performance Solana requires. If your system meets these specs, then you're good to go. We'll cover four essential steps to get your node running. Install Solana CLI. Configure environment. Genesis and snapshots, where we'll download blockchain data for sync. System D service, which would be used to automate node management. After these four steps, you'll have a fully functional Solana node ready to sync with the network and begin participating in the blockchain ecosystem. The beauty of this approach is that it works regardless of your hosting choice. Whether you're on a dedicated server, cloud instance, or your own hardware, these steps remain the same. So let's start with the Solana CLI installation and build your node step by step. All right, since I'm using a Windows PC, the first thing we need is a Linux environment to run Solana CLI. The easiest way is to install Windows Subsystem for Linux with Ubuntu. If you're already on Linux or macOS, you can skip this part and jump to the terminal. Open the Microsoft Store, search for Ubuntu, and download the latest stable version. I'm using Ubuntu 24.04. Now, in our Ubuntu terminal, we need to install the Solana command line interface, CLI, specifically the Agave release, version 2.3.5, which is the latest stable version for validators as of this recording. We will run this command, which downloads and installs the Solana CLI, including the Agave validator binary we need to run our node. We will add to our machine's path. This configures the machine to recognize the tool, ensuring seamless access. Next, we will verify our installation using Solana-version. You should see something like Solana CLI 2.35. If the install fails, check your internet with the CLI command pinggoogle.com. If Solana isn't found, ensure the path is set correctly or reinstall. Now we'll run this CLI command to set our Solana RPC endpoint to testnet. Next, we'll verify using Solana config get. You should see this output. Solana has three main clusters, mainnet for live transactions, devnet for application testing, and testnet for learning and experimentation. We'll use the testnet to ensure a safe, cost-free environment. We will run this command to generate the validator key pair, which identifies your node on the network. We'll be prompted for a passphrase. I recommend using a strong one and storing it offline or in a password manager. Every Solana validator needs three key pairs to operate securely, and we've just created one of three. Next, we'll run this command to generate the vote account key pair. This is used for voting on blocks and required for validators. Also, same deal for your password. Strong passphrase, store it securely. I'm using the same passphrase for this demo, but you should use unique ones for each key pair. Now, we'll run this command to generate the authorized withdrawer key pair, which controls withdrawing staked SOL. This is important for security. A critical security note is this key pair controls your staked funds. Never store it on the validator server. Keep it on a secure offline device 
like a USB drive or air-gapped computer and back it up. These key pairs are like your node's ID card and bank keys. The validator and vote account key pairs will go on the server, but the authorized withdrawer stays offline for safety. Now, if the Solana command fails, ensure the CLI is installed and in your path. If you lose a key pair, you'll need to regenerate it and start over, or recover funds using the seed phrase. We will now configure the Solana CLI to use the validator key pair. To activate our validator, we'll need testnet sol tokens in our validator's identity account to cover setup costs, such as creating a vote account. So we'll try an airdrop. This requests one testnet sol token. It might work, but testnet faucets can be flaky sometimes. If the airdrop fails, like mine did, we'll go to the Solana faucet site. But before then, we'll start by retrieving the public key for your validator identity, which functions like a wallet address. Initially, the balance is likely zero. We'll get our Solana public key using the command Solana address. Now, on the Solana faucet site, we'll make sure we're on testnet as it's defaults to devnet. Also have our GitHub account connected. Mine is connected already. We'll paste our public address request one sol, click confirm, and then complete the capture. Next, let's verify on SolScan that we've gotten our testnet faucet. Again, we'll make sure we're on the testnet and paste your public key. If SolScan shows zero sol token, wait a minute or recheck the public key. Now we can confirm our balance is one sol token. We need sol tokens to create a vote account and stake our validator. Testnet sol token is free, so we're safe to experiment. Now that we've got testnet sol token, we're back in our terminal to create a vote account to register our validator with the network. But let's check our balance to be sure we have some faucets. Now we see we have one sol token. Next, we'll use this command so we can link our vote account to our validator identity and set the authorized withdrawer to control funds. It uses some of our sol token to create the account. The vote account lets your validator vote on blocks, which is how you contribute to the network and earn rewards on mainnet. Time to get our validator running on a server. Go to this site, navigate to the solutions tab, choose a Solana server. We'll be using Cherry servers because they offer pre-configured Solana setups, which saves a ton of hassle. You can use any provider like AWS, Google Cloud, or Hetzner, as long as it meets Solana's requirements. We'll scroll down to the configure server button and click it. Next, we'll tweak the configuration if needed. Like more storage for mainnet, I choose to switch to pay hourly. Log in like me or create an account and click pay and deploy. Wait about 15 minutes for the server to deploy. You'll get a notification and see your details, like your IP address, username, and password on your dashboard. A validator needs serious hardware to keep up with Solana's high-speed blockchain. Cherry Servers makes it plug and play. If deployment fails, check your payment method or contact Cherry Service support. Now that our server is ready, let's log in and start setting it up. We'll run this SSH command using our IP address in our Ubuntu terminal. Next, we are prompted to enter the password, which is on our recently deployed server dashboard. That's why I'm struggling here. Note that the password won't show on the screen. This will connect us to the server as the root user. If SSH fails with the output connection refused, ensure the server is up, check your Cherry server's dashboard, or ping the IP address. If the output is permission denied, verify the username or password from the dashboard. Let's make sure our server is up to date and secure before installing anything. To ensure this, we'll update packages using these sudo commands. This grabs the latest security patches and software updates for Ubuntu 24.04. Now we configure the firewall to allow Solana specific ports and SSH to prevent lockout. First, we'll start by allowing a range of ports using the command. Next, we'll allow some individual ports that our applications require. Once we've added the rules, we'll enable UFW with this command to check all the rules and confirm that UFW is active, we'll use this command. And that's it. We've configured our firewall and our server is much more secure. Next thing is to create the sol user using this command. We'll follow prompts to set a unique password and optional user details, but we skip this since we're on testnet.
This command verifies the disk space. Next, we list block devices with this command. Next, we'll format and mount drives for ledger and accounts. This lists my storage devices, their file systems, unique IDs, and where they're mounted. We'll make a directory for mounting your drive. Next, we'll change the ownership of the directory to our sole user, which was earlier created. We then change the ownership of that directory. Now we mount the drive. And lastly, we mount the drive. Solana validators process large volumes of data, requiring specific system optimizations to perform efficiently. We'll now increase file limits using this command. First, edit or add the default limit no file character to 1 million in the manager section of the file. We've raised the limit on open files to handle Solana's extensive data operations and increase memory mapping capabilities for managing large data sets. Using this command, we'll securely transfer the validator from our local machine to a dedicated server directory, like sending encrypted files to a secure vault. Our validator requires its identity and vote account key pairs on the server but the authorized withdrawal key pair remains offline for security. We'll input our salt user's password, not the server's password as I was initially trying here. We then securely transfer the vote account key pairs from our local machine to a dedicated server directory using the same password for our salt user. If the transfer fails, it's typically due to connectivity issues or incorrect server details, which can be resolved by verifying the connection. This step positions our validator's credentials securely on the server. We'll create directories for the blockchain ledger and also the account data. The validator needs two directories on the server, one for the blockchain ledger, which stores transaction history, and one for account data, which tracks wallet states. You create these directories and assign ownership to the sole user, ensuring the validator can access them. If issues arise, they're usually related to permissions or insufficient disk space, which you can check and correct. We need to install Solana CLI on the server too, just like on our local machine. This step equips the server with the tools needed to operate the validator. If problems occur, they're usually related to network connectivity or permissions, which can be addressed by retrying or adjusting user access. Next, we verify the installation to confirm it's functional. Let's create a script to start the validator with all the right settings. In our sole home directory, we'll create a folder called bin. Next, inside that folder, create a file called validator.sh and make it executable. The script also sets network ports for blockchain interactions and includes a unique hash to confirm it's on the testnet blockchain. When we run this script, the validator begins syncing with the testnet, logging its activity. We'll keep this terminal running and open another terminal. In our new terminal, we'll once again SSH into our server and input our password. We'll check the process using this command. Next, we'll run this command so we monitor the log file for updates, such as processing new blocks or casting votes. We'll keep this terminal running while we make some checks. In a new terminal, again, we'll check the cluster we're on and we see we've been reverted back to the mainnet cluster. So we set our cluster back to testnet using the same commands used earlier. We'll also confirm using the same command, solana config get. Using this command, we'll check to verify that our node is visible in the network's gossip protocol, appearing with your server's IP and public key. Next, we'll run this command, which tells us how far behind the network our validator is and how quickly we are catching up. We also confirm whether the validator is fully synced with the blockchain or still catching up. Next, we'll verify that our validator is ready to be a voting participant of the network with the Solana validators command. It is, although we have zero sol. If it's not visible or syncing, issues like firewall restrictions, 
low disk space, or network connectivity may be the cause, which you can check. This step ensures your node is fully integrated into the testnet. To keep the validator running even after reboots, let's make it a systemd service. To ensure our validator runs continuously, even after server restarts, we set it up as a system service, like scheduling software to launch automatically. We configure a service that runs our validator script under the sole user, with settings to restart if it crashes and handle large numbers of files. We activate the service and verify it's running. This command both enables the service to start at boot and starts it immediately. The output confirms that a symlink was created, meaning the service is now active and managed by systemd. Now you've successfully set up a Solana validator node on the testnet, contributing to the network's decentralization. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.